The Home Assistant 2025.7 beta release has just been released. The integration page has had its UI completely revamped. It now matches some of the other places in Home Assistant, just like the Pickers update from last month. Certain integrations can now have sub entries. Template and YAML editor window is now able to be resized. The areas card has been updated to look like the tile card, along with some corresponding areas dashboard updates. And the Home Assistant Assist functionality, if you're using AI in your Home Assistant instance, now has an ask a question action, which gives you the opportunity to do something with your custom conversations within Home Assistant. So let's dive into the changes. The integration menu page got a huge overhaul. If you remember the old UI where each menu option was statically listed and the integration description was on the left-hand side with links to the docs and the debug logging. In this release, the integration UI has been updated to match some of the newer areas within Home Assistant. The old integration UI has been that way for several years, as long as I've been using Home Assistant. So it's nice to see that it finally get a refresh. And so here you can see the new integration page. This looks much nicer with the new discovered entities up here in the green. So you can easily see that you have some devices to add. All the configured integration entries are now down here in their own section, along with the name and showing the number of entities in each integration entry. So that's pretty cool. If you're looking for the known issues, documentation, or the debug logging link, those options have now been moved to the upper right-hand corner of the integration page. Another feature in this release is that they added integration sub-entries. Most of the integrations that support this are AI-related. The one integration that's not AI-related that most people use is the MQTT integration. For example, on prior versions of Home Assistant, if you created a custom MQTT device, it would show up in the same box on the MQTT integration page. So now in Home Assistant 2025.7, we can see that the custom MQTT sensor was added as a sub-entry under the main MQTT integration. If you're an advanced Home Assistant user, this one will be a really nice touch. If you're editing a template or editing an automation in the YAML section, you'll know that there's that little small box where you have to edit your template in. Well, in this next release, you don't have to worry about it because the template editor window now has a little button in the upper right-hand part of the screen that you can click that expands the template editor window to fill your entire browser window. So that's actually really nice to see. If you have a lot of template sensors like I do, some of these can get kind of complicated. So being able to see everything related to the template instead of just everything in that small little box from before, it's going to be a really nice change. This update also works in other parts of Home Assistant, like when you're editing an automation and you have to edit the YAML and it makes the YAML window much bigger too. So that's really great to see that it's both in the YAML window and in the template editing window as well. The area card has been updated. It now looks like the tile card. Here's kind of what the current area card looks like. You can see that there's the different indicators for those different types of devices. Well, the new release, the area card has been redesigned to look and act more like the tile card. The tile card gives you a nice overview of your entities. And so it's nice to see that there's some commonality between the different cards. Hopefully this keeps up with some other cards in the future. The Areas dashboard has gotten a small quality of life improvement. If you remember the old Areas dashboard, it did a pretty good job at recognizing all the devices go in what room, but if you had a lot of devices, it could end up cluttering your main Areas dashboard. But on the new release, all of the rooms are centralized together in one area, and then each device type in each room is centralized under a single button. So you can turn all the lights or covers on or off. And if you use AI in your Home Assistant instance, there's now the ask question action, which lets you more carry on a conversation instead of just asking it a question and getting it a response back. It's a little more interactive than it used to be. Here's an example of the YAML where you can see the question here that gets sent to your speaker or other AI instance of what kind of music do you want to listen to? And then depending on what you respond with, it will choose the appropriate condition. So if you answer heavy metal, it would trigger this condition. Or if you said a specific artist, it would then trigger this condition. Unfortunately, I don't have this working on my system, so I can't show you a demo. But let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in. So there's a few new integrations this month. The only one that really stood out to me was the PlayStation Network integration. It currently only tracks the games you play and then can show that information in Home Assistant. In terms of other noteworthy changes, there's a whole list of them here, but the one that stood out to me was the device and entity management updates. Specifically, it will remember 
your entity customizations even if you delete that device from Home Assistant. So that's an overview of everything in Home Assistant 2025.7. I think the integration UI revamp is gonna be the most noticeable, but the integration sub entries option will definitely be useful specifically for MQTT devices. If you're looking for a good way to get MQTT set up, check out this video where I show you how to set up MQTT completely from scratch. And then I show you how to create a custom sensor within Home Assistant on your own topic. So check out this video if you're interested and I'll see you in the next one.